I think I'm having contractions. Can you drive me to the hospital? When the labor finally started, I asked my husband who was at home. He agreed with a look of annoyance. I got ready in a hurry and followed him out the door. We reached the parking lot of our apartment complex. He got a message on the phone. He stopped to read it and then uttered something unbelievable. I've been invited to have drinks with my co-workers. I gotta go now. What? I couldn't believe my ears. There I was, enduring the massive pain, and he was going to a dinner party. I desperately pleaded with him. Are you kidding me? I'm having contractions right now. He just shrugged it off, saying, Take a taxi or something. You'll be fine. Seriously? Wait! As I was about to protest, another wave of pain hit, and I crouched down on the ground. Without even glancing at me, he hopped in the car and drove away, leaving me behind. At that moment, I was quietly seething with anger. I swore to myself that I wouldn't let him get away with it. Little did I know, he would end up begging for my help later on. I'm Sabrina, a 29-year-old part-time homemaker. I'd like to share a bit about my background first. My father Harold is 62 years old, and my brother Simon is 4 years older than me. My mother passed away when I was in grade school due to illness. She was fragile but kind, and I still remember her fondly. I mourn her loss deeply. My father and brother took care of me and raised me with lots of love following my mother's passing. My father is a high school physical education teacher and holds a black belt in judo. My brother, who's been trained by my father since a young age, became a police officer and is also a judo expert. They both have intimidating and tough exteriors, but they are actually down to earth and shower me with love and care. I can't thank them enough for that. So, when I got engaged and introduced my partner, I was really excited. I met Kai through work. He was a sales rep of my company's counterpart. Initially, we only discuss work-related matters, but gradually, we start going out to eat together and deepened our connection. His parents both had a background in wrestling, which gave us a common topic to talk about as I came from a judo family. While neither of us practice combative sports, we bond over the sheer experiences and inside jokes related to having similar parents. After two years of being together, he popped the question, and I happily accepted. Our first step was to visit my family to make the announcement. Given how overprotective they had been, I was worried about how they would react. But to my surprise, my father teared up. Oh my, you're getting married. I'm sure your mother in heaven is thrilled. I'm really happy for you. My brother seems to be overcome with emotions too. Congratulations to both of you. Kai, take good care of her. Seeing them like that, I couldn't help but get teary. We then went to see Kai's family. I was welcomed by his father, who looked as strong as sturdy as my father, and his gentle-looking mother. They were also overjoyed by the news. What a pleasant surprise! I'm so glad to meet such a lovely girl! We wholeheartedly welcome you to our family. Kai, you must do your best to make her happy, okay? With the blessing of both families, we got married. Afterward, we rented an apartment midway between our families and started our newlywed life. I was looking forward to spending some romantic time together. However, my expectations were quickly shattered. 
He didn't help with any household chores. He even made jovanistic comments like, "Housework is a wife's job. Show more respect to your husband." Despite often working late and on weekends, his attitude remained imposing. Still, I loved him, so I endured it and took care of the house by myself. Half a year after our marriage, I found out I was pregnant. I shared the news with him, expecting him to be thrilled, but all he said was, "Oh yeah." I was disappointed. But my happiness was undeniable. I immediately told both our sets of parents. They were excited, especially my father, who seemed overwhelmed with joy. I will be the grandfather, huh? This is the best thing ever. Take good care of yourself, Sabrina. My in-laws were equally supportive. If there's anything we could do to help, just let us know. Don't be shy, okay? Everyone seemed to be over the moon, and I was looking forward to a healthy and happy pregnancy. I hoped that Kai would change his way, knowing he was going to be the father. Soon after, I started experiencing morning sickness. It was more severe than I had ever imagined. It felt like I was being rocked on the boat all day long. Leaving me unable to get out of the bed. When I explained my condition to my workplace, they recommended taking a leave of absence, which I gratefully accepted. I was spending most of my time at home, but there were days when I couldn't do any chores. On that day, I was bedridden from the morning, unable to do anything. When Kai returned home late, hey. Why are you in bed? Where's my dinner? I couldn't make it. I'm not feeling well. Sorry, but you can have the frozen meals in the fridge. You were at home all day, and you still couldn't do the housework. He yelled at me in frustration. I tried to make him understand my suffering, but he wouldn't listen. Instead, he said with a stern face, "Pregnancy isn't an illness." Don't use it as an excuse to skip work and chores. Now, make me dinner. Before I could respond, I rushed to the bathroom, feeling a surge of nauseousness. He continued to throw hurtful words at me. Don't think for a moment that you can earn sympathy. That's not my intention. I'm really suffering here. He let out a deliberate sigh. <sighs> Just do what you're supposed to do. If there's no food when I get back next time, you regret it. In the end, I cooked his dinner while battling nausea. He didn't show any concern for me during my pregnancy, and he continued to damage perfect housekeeping, just as he did before. He was often away from home, but criticized me at length when he returned. Scolding me for not doing the chores as expected, my life was becoming unbearable, and the idea of divorce crossed my mind multiple times. However, thinking about my family and in-laws, who had been so happy about our marriage, I couldn't bring myself to confide in anyone. I couldn't bear to take the father away from our unborn child either. So. I endured it desperately. As time passed, I entered the last trimester of my pregnancy. The due date was approaching, and I asked Kai to be home as much as possible. However, he continued work late, as if nothing had changed. That day, he was running cats and dogs, and thunder starting rumbling as the hour passed. I could feel contractions in my abdomen, but I was at ease as Kai was at home. Around 8 p.m., my stomach started cramping. I measured the intervals and realized the pain was coming every 20 minutes. I was in labor and needed to get to the hospital. Feeling anxious, I asked Kai, "I think I'm in labor. 
Can you drive me to the hospital? He agreed with a look of annoyance. I got ready in a hurry and followed him out the door. When we reached the parking lot of our apartment complex, his phone beeped. He stopped to read a message and then uttered something unbelievable. I'm invited to have drinks with my co-worker. I gotta go now. What? I couldn't believe my ears. There I was, enduring the massive pain, and he was going for drinks. I desperately pleaded with him. Are you kidding me? I'm in labor right now. Take a taxi or something. You'll be fine. Seriously? Wait. As I was about to protest, another wave of pain hit, and I crouched down on the ground. Without even glancing at me, he hopped in the car and drove away, leaving me behind. At that moment, I was quietly seething with anger. I swore to myself that I wouldn't let him get away with it. I didn't have the luxury to dwell on that and try to call the taxi, but due to the heavy rain, it was impossible to find one. I sent a message to a WhatsApp group with my father and brother, asking for help. Thirty minutes later, they arrived in the panic frenzy. They rushed over to me as I crouched in the parking lot. Oh my God! Are you okay? Get in the car quickly and head to the hospital. My brother picked me up and helped me into the car. My father looked perplexed and uttered, "What on earth is Kai doing at a time like this?" Once we were in the car, I waited for the pain to ease and then explained everything about his mistreatment. They were utterly shocked. No, I can't believe he was that kind of guy. Anyway, let's focus on your childbirth. Don't worry, we will be with you the whole time. And so we arrived at the hospital. By then, the contractions were coming every five minutes, and I was soon on the delivery table. Later that night, I gave birth to my daughter. The delivery progressed quite quickly. And the doctor mentioned that I might have delivered the baby in the car if I hadn't arrived then. I cradled my adorable tiny daughter in my arms. My father and brother, who had been my side without a moment's rest, were also moved to tears when they saw her. Congratulations, Sabrina! You did great. You should get some rest now. Exhausted from giving birth, I quickly fell asleep. After some time, I was awakened by the repeated calls on my phone. The caller was Kai. I tried to ignore it and focused on asking the nurse for advice on caring for the baby. Meanwhile, my phone kept ringing, and I worried that it waked my sleeping baby. So reluctantly, I answered the phone. Right away, I heard Kai's panicked voice. "Sabrina, help me!" In a flat and cold tone, I replied, "Who is this?" "What?" <laughs> He sounded baffled. "You must have the wrong number." So I hung up. As I was about to end the call, he urgently shouted, "Wait! When I came home this morning, your father and brother were there, and..." They've been giving me hell. They've been scolding me for two hours now, and it looks like they're about to beat me up. Help me, make them leave. I see. Well, I unilaterally hang up the phone. Afterward, my friends dropped by, delighted to see the baby's face. When my close friend Cat, who used to work with me, came over. She hesitated before revealing something. I'm sorry, it's not so appropriate for me to bring this up now, but、uh, what she told me was shocking, and I clenched my fist in anger. The next day, I was discharged from the hospital. When I returned home with the baby, I was met with a surprising sight. 
Kai was sitting cross-legged in the middle of the living room with a badly swollen face. My father, brother, and in-law surrounded him, glaring at him. As soon as Kai saw me, he cried out, Honey, you're back! Help me! What in the world is going on here? When I was taken aback by the disturbing scene, my father-in-law reassured me, Don't worry, it was me who gave him a lesson. It wasn't your father or brother. I was relieved to hear that at least. Kai gathered himself and said, Well, our baby's back now, so let's drop this issue. I've reacted on my actions enough. Honey, let me hold her. He stretched out his arms toward me. I immediately stepped back to protect the baby. Do you really think I'd let someone who let me in the labor pain and disappeared touch our child? I won't let you lay the finger on her. Stay away. At that moment, he turned beet red and his eyes widened. Hey, who do you think you're talking to? I decided it was time to drop a bombshell on him. You know, it wasn't drinks with call workers that day, was it? What are you talking about? He looked confused, and I thrust my phone screen in front of his face. This is a picture my friend took on the day when I went to labor. Care to explain this? There was him, army mom with an unknown woman, entering the hotel on the screen. What Kat revealed to me was his affair. She had coincidentally witnessed it and took pictures. She didn't want to accept me during my last trimester, so she was going to keep it a secret until the time was right. When she learned that I have already given birth, she felt that I needed to know. Kai, pale as a ghost, stared at the incriminating photo. Everyone around us was in shock, and there was an eerie silence. No, this is... Uh... Before he could say more, he was slammed into the wall. I didn't understand what was happening for a moment, but by the time I realized it, my mother-in-law was breathing heavily. It turned out she had tackled him. She might have retired from wrestling, but she was still quite formidable. What the heck, mom? As she coughed and sputtered. My father coldly replied, You, what the heck have you done to my daughter? Explain yourself. Cornered by the four sturdy adults, he began to speak meekly. He admitted to starting an affair with a co-worker right before my pregnancy, intending to break it off once our child was born. He explained that he was going to meet her for the last time on that day. Please, believe me, I'll never cheat again. I'll be committed to you and the baby from now on. Before I could say anything, my father-in-law roared. Cut the nonsense. Your sweet talk won't work here. But, but our child needs a father, right? Right, honey? He reached out to me for support, but I forcefully pushed his hand away. We're better off without a father like you. Cheating while I was suffering from morning sickness. What the heck? I will never forgive you. Get ready for a divorce and child support. No. Then my mother-in-law addressed me. Sabrina, we're truly sorry. We're going to strengthen him out. I nodded and my in-laws grabbed him by the collar and dragged him away. I was left being comforted by my father and brother. Almost a year later, our divorce was finalized. The $30,000 alimony was quickly transferred to my account. As for child support, my ex-in-laws lent the money to Kai, and it was paid in the lump sum. To my surprise, his mistress reached out to me and apologized. She claimed not to know about our marriage and my pregnancy. She offered to pay some compensation as a sincerely apology, 
but I declined and told her not to contact me anymore. She ended up breaking up with Kai and moved back to her hometown. My ex-in-laws forced him to quit his job and got him a position at a construction company owned by an acquaintance. He now lives under strict supervision, working hard to repay the money he owes to them. He faces daily scolding from his younger boss and is apparently exhausted every day, but I have no intention of forgiving him yet. In fact, I find satisfaction in his misfortune. As for me, I used the alimony to move to a new place and start a fresh life with my daughter. My father and brother frequently visit us and help with parenting. I also let my daughter spend time with my ex-in-laws, who became allies in this situation. Moving forward, I'm determined to raise my daughter with all my heart, while I remember to be always grateful to my family.